okay so good morning everyone sorry for the delay for uh, unpleasant circumstances no problem we will try to do what we can with the time we have uh, there are a lot of terms a lot of signs a lot of appearances uh, that we see in the central nervous system in general and in the brain in particular so we will try to collect these signs, appearances, descriptive terms. We use a lot. Some of them, you will see, some of them we know it, common, every day we see it. Some of them, we don't know it, we rarely see them, we rarely hear about them. The aim of this presentation is to help us and to help the young ones to know what are we talking about. Yani, for example, when we say, a target sign, what does it mean? How does it look? A bull's eye, what does it mean? Uh, I don't know any term that we use. We will try to see it and to make some comments on, on it. For example, let's see this first appearance. What do you think is going on here? There is buckling. The diagnosis, we all know it. It's what? It's a meningioma. We have no difference about that. What are the features that help us to decide that this is a meningioma? First, we can see the buckling sign, and what we, what some people call it accordion sign. What what do we mean by buckling? You can see, sorry, just uh, you can see here the mass is pushing the adjacent brain parenchyma laterally, making it indent. Just like this, I don't know, fruit or something, it's indented, it's buckled. So when we say buckling, we mean this appearance. Also, we can consider it like an accordion, you know, <coughs> it's just pushing and pulling. So it is, this sign is used for collect, correct localization of intracranial mass, okay, which is very important for the accurate diagnosis and the surgical planning. Huh? Intraaxial masses usually expand the brain parenchyma and cause vasogenic edema. Not as in this case. It does not expand. It displaces the brain parenchyma, okay? Uh, causing bowing of the gyri, which is the accordion sign or the buckling sign, and less edema than the intraaxial lesions. So this sign helps us to decide that this is an extraaxial mass, okay? Other useful findings for extraaxial mass include the CSF cleft sign, the dural tail sign, also these signs can help us, if you see a CSF cleft or a dural tail, help us to decide that this is an extra axial lesion or could be a meningioma or whatever else. Keep in mind that the meningioma is the most common extra axial mass. Some people say it's about 15% of all brain tumors. 15, one five of all brain tumors are meningiomas. So you should keep that in mind, okay? Now, What's this appearance? What's this sign? What's this? I don't know what. It's a sagittal brain MRI showing this, uh, sorry, this loss of signal. Okay, there's CSF, just hyper intense on T2. Okay, here within the aqueduct, within the fourth ventricle, it turns black due to loss of signal due to flow, uh, CSF flow, okay? It's what, what's called aqueductal or CSF flow void, okay? Also, some people call it trumpet sign. This is the trumpet, the, like, uh, I don't know, horn or whatever, okay? Uh, <coughs> you can see the, uh, the flow void, okay, with some dilatation of the aqueduct. It has two differential diagnoses, either communicating hydrocephalus or intracranial volume loss some sort of intracranial volume loss results in rapid csf flow this will cause what loss of signal will cause this appearance it's not due to obstruction it's exactly opposite to obstruction not slow flow it is fast flow okay you know the csf circulation is due to heart pulsation okay so if there is high velocity it will produce signal void uh, they can't, uh, findings are most apparent 
and can understand the aqueduct of Sylvius. You can see the findings within the aqueduct of Sylvius, okay? Uh, creating what's called a trumpet appearance with an appearance with the fourth ventricle. You see this flow void, it looks like this trumpet. They are similar somewhat, okay? So, uh, it is uh, due to uh, increased CSF volume or CSF flow, uh, as in communicating or non obstructive hydrocephalus or intracranial volume loss. Other features of non normal pressure hydrocephalus or non -communic uh, or communicating hydrocephalus. What does what are other features? First of all, we have rounding of the frontal horns, frontal and temporal horns. They are rounded. Okay. Yeah, the gyri and the salsi will uh, will be prominent, especially the sylvian fissure. Also, will be. What's, what's going on? There's something wrong with the mouse. I don't. Okay. Just a second. Uh, sorry? Enhancement of the meninges and empty delta sign. Enhancement of the meninges, exactly. Empty delta sign, it's are other features. Uh, you have prominent sylvian fissure. You have rounding of the temporal and temporal, uh, frontal and temporal horns. You have uh, upward bowing of the carpus callosum, okay? Yes. And sometimes the cerebellum herniates. There are some quantitative CSF flow imaging using phase contrast techniques that can help the, uh, to assess the severity of the disease and the predicting response to CSF flow shunting. If they put a CSF, a VP shunt, ventricular peritoneal shunt, will it help or not? There are some quantitative CSF analysis quantity that can help, okay, using MRI. In cases of uh, normal pressure hydrocephalus, yeah, okay, the, you need okay. to shunt some CSF to decrease the hydrocephalus. Okay, I'm talking about this pattern. Okay, can anyone help us with that? What's this? Incomplete ring sign, or broken ring sign, or open ring sign, crescent, horseshoe, leading edge, arc sign, all of them different words for the same appearance. You can call it arc sign, broken ring, incomplete ring, open ring, crescent, horseshoe, leading edge. Okay. What does that mean? I don't see myelinating. First of all, it's demyelinating disease, not abscess. Okay. The first uh, differential. So, and other features uh, primary tumor and lymphoma. Okay. Abscess usually more complete than incomplete and more homogeneous than just we'll, 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 talk, we'll talk about it don't worry so you can see multiple enhancing lesions including the right frontal operculum and left I'm have some problem just wait uh, left inferior parietal lobule this demonstrates curvilinear enhancement you can see the enhancement here it's incomplete it's open toward the periphery Yani, the opening of the ring is toward the periphery of the brain. Okay? Opposite to the abscess. Exactly. The, usually we say that mo first differential is demyelinating disease, which we mean multiple sclerosis. Okay? Primary tumor, lymphoma, other possibilities. So, approximately half of the tumefactive demyelinating lesions demonstrate this pathologic enhancement, the incomplete ring. Half of them. Okay? It's a relatively specific sign. Relatively. It's not 100%, but... You should keep that in mind. It helps us to distinguish the active demyelination from the infectious or neoplastic etiologies. The leading edge, the enhancing pattern, the enhancing part, okay, uh, can point toward the gray matter or the basal ganglia, while the central non-enhancing core may also be present, corresponding to chronic inflammation and gliosis. So the active part is the peripheral, the central part is the gliosis, the inf chronic inflammatory part, the fib. It's not a fibrosis. We don't have fibrosis in the brain, but let's say, to yes. just to make it easier to understand, it's fibrosis. Uh, exactly. The, the tissue with response, with healing response, okay? Uh, vasogenic edema may be present, especially in the region of active disease. Uh, 
the cerebral ring enhancing lesion, there is a mnemonic for it. Okay, what's the mnemonic? Magic Dr. L, which is metastasis, abscess, glioblastoma multiformi, infarction, subacute, the contusion, demyelinating disease, radiation necrosis, and Dr. L, magic Dr. L. What's the L? Lymphoma. Exactly. Magic Dr. L. Okay, it's exactly. Yeah, exactly. And immunocompromised patients, lymphoma will have this heterogeneous pattern. Other than the myotic disease, the incomplete ring enhancement is occasionally seen in low-grade primary tumors and lymphoma affecting immunocompromised patients. Yeah. Okay? We have some time. Okay. Oh, tamam. Good. So, what do we see here? This is a brain MRI, T1 with contrast, axial image, showing a lesion in the left side of the brain. This lesion is showing peripheral enhancement with central nodule enhancement. This is not really central, it's eccentric. Okay? So, yeah, the, the diagnosis, but the finding, what's, what's the term to describe this? Exactly, this is an eccentric target sign. Okay? Eccentric target, not centric or symmetrical. So, in the differential diagnosis, we have either toxoplasmosis, number one, other possibilities include other infections and malignancy, okay? Asymmetric, asymmetric. asymmetric or eccentric. Asymmetric. It's not in the center. It's uh, yani out of the center, okay? So. I think it's pathognomic for toxoplasmosis. Not highly specific, relatively specific, highly specific, but not always. Never say ne never, okay? Sorry. So, the toxoplasmosis, the ingested oocyst from the cat feces and other contaminated meats transmit into the bloodstream where they're preferentially localized to the CNS and muscles. They like to go to the CNS and the muscles, okay? Where they develop into cystic bradyzoids in the pregnant woman, they can cross the placenta barrier, cause neonatal infection, okay? So it's one of the neonatal infection is there. Toxoplasma is one of the torch example, exactly. Okay? They are usually, in the brain, they are usually multifocal, rim enhancement, large irregular nodules, which is represent. The nodule is a combination of inflammation, hemorrhage, and necrosis. All of them, the nodule. Okay? In the cortex and deep gray matter, the nodules tend to be eccentrically uh, located, which is asymmetric target sign. Okay? Corresponding to the enclotizing abscess in the penetrating vessel, deeper and chymal lesion may demonstrate more concentric appearance, which is the concentric target sign. So in the periphery, it's eccentric. In the deep gray matter, the basal ganglia, more towards centric, okay? Concentric, let's say. Which is more specific for toxoplasmosis and correspond to the central hemorrhage. In contrast, the bacterial abscesses are typically smooth, ring enhancing without nodularity. It's just enhancing of the ring, okay? Uh, Neurocystosarcosis demonstrates small calcified dot-like lesions. Scolics. So the scolics. When they are dead, they calcify. It's just a calcific dot, okay? Primary neoplasms and metastases are more heterogeneous in appearance, as we, would we expect. Okay, this is little... The next one is a little bit difficult. I don't think... We comment. What's this? Hypodense. What? Okay. The corona radiata. Let's say that appear hypodense the, from the posterior uh, lip and yeah, from. I have no idea. Uh, from here and all of this are hypodense. The corona radiata. You can see. Okay, and you can see some edema here and here. Okay, this is what we call bat or bearded skull or dragon claw. Dragon claw, okay, like here the dragon claw, this appearance or a bat appearance or whatever. This is uh, the edema, as we said, in the posterior lip of the internal capsule, optic radiation, and the splenium. The, in the MRI, you can see. 
uh, edema in the ventral midbrain, this and this, sparing the red nuclei. Okay, this it's not very common appearance. We don't see it always. It's uh, rare. Uh, we uh, it's seen in toxic leukoencephalopathy. Okay, <coughs> what are the causes of toxic leukoencephalopathy? Can can you demonstrate or enumerate some drugs? Drugs number one. Environmental toxins. Hypoxia. Hypoxia. Immunosuppressive medication. Uh, Cranial radiation. Uh, radiation. Okay. No. Uh, like a central pontine demyelinosis. Okay. Classically, there is diffuse supratentorial white matter T2 hyperintensity reduced diffusion. Okay. Uh, selective involvement of the internal capsule and optic radiation produce the dragon claw appearance. When they say the optic radi, sorry. Oh, sorry. Like, you can better this. Here you can see this. It's edematous. It's the same image. Nothing. Never say, but zagarete. Okay. You can see some minimal edema here and there, sparing the red nuclei here and here. Okay. So, would give us the. A dragon claw appearance. Uh, Infratentorial abnormality may occur in cases of heroin inhalation. Do you know what they call it? Heroin inhalation? Heroin. Eh? Chasing the dragon. They call it chasing the dragon because what will happen? Shoni uh, Hashishun. Actually, one of the professors from America told me this information. They put it in a spoon, okay? Uh, exactly, <laughs> okay? They put it in a spoon, the powder, the heroin powder. Yeah. They put a uh, lighter uh, below it, and it start to uh, fumes. This fume looks like a dragon. So they just chase the dragon, you know? Oh. They try to smell it. This is what I've seen from France. Exactly, as in, you see in the movies. Huh? That this chasing the dragon can you cause infratentorial, okay? Uh, abnormality. Here is a more bearded skull or a bat, a bearded skull appearance, okay? It spares the dentate nucleus and spares the red nucleus, okay? Finding can be difficult to do. To distinguish from other leukoencephalopathy and the clinical correlation is essential. Okay, you cannot just say uh, heroin abuse. Uh, it, you need history. Okay. It can be hypoxic. Exactly. We have. Uh, I have a lot of science in pediatrics. Pediatric opinion. Okay. So should we stop now or uh, continue tomorrow? Maybe. Okay, let's continue tomorrow. Sorry, it's a short time, but uh, you know what happened. Tomorrow, I have the key.